Hey, welcome or oh, welcome back to 4F Beauty. When will I be YouTube famous? I don't know. What I do know, however, is that this is an awesomely fun collab with Anya. Nona, who collectively we are the bitches of Eastwick, but we are also collabing with Stacy from Stacy's Midnight Makeup. No, Stacy's Midnight. Stacy's Makeup Corner. It's very hot in here. I need to go and get another glass of coffee because clearly I am brain melting stage. We decided that all of us had got Juvia's Place palettes and we all like our Juvia's Place palettes so we decided we would choose our favourite three palettes and using favourite shades from those favourite palettes we would produce an eye look from it. Now, my three Juvia's palettes are the tribe, magic, and masquerade. I have no idea what that was. As I said, my brain is melting. Thankfully, it's melting at the end of my day's filming, not at the start of it. But, this is a collab, a multi-channel collab, and if you want to see what the favourite palettes are from Anya, Nona and Stacey, what their favourite shades are, what look they have produced, then my friend, you, you are in precisely the right place. Grab a drink, grab a snack, put your feet up, and enjoy. Hey, welcome back from the intro. It's a little bit later in the day than I normally film. But it was just so hot in my kitchen earlier, if I had tried even with the fan on, the makeup would not have worked. By the way, is that my new earrings? Red Jasper. I had a reading done from a friend of mine and she told me I should get some Red Jasper. So, I spotted these, fell in love with them. They're a little heavier than I'm used to. I'm used to having very light earrings in these. I've actually got a bit of weight to them. So. At least I know it's genuine jasper and not plastic. Right. You will have seen, and I'm hoping I have talked you through this in the intro, but just in case. This is, um, a, it's a Juvia's Place based film with the Bitches of Eastwick and with a, someone I have not collabed with before, but I have watched because I saw her um, I think she collabed with Anya, because let's face it, Anya is the queen of all collabs. I don't know how the woman organises her time to collab with so many people. It just, I need some of her time management skills, <laughs> is what I'm saying. Um, Stacey's makeup corner, she's lovely. She's a real poppet. Um, and what we're doing, we're choosing our three favourite Juvia's Place palettes. We're choosing our three favourite shades from our favourite palette, two favourite shades from our second place palette and one shade from our third place palette. So we've got six colours we can use to create our look. So, there's a good chance we're going to be using similar palettes, there's a good chance we're using different palettes. If we have got the same palette, whether we choose the same colours from that palette, who knows. 
It's a real, I like this one. This is a real sort of smorgasbord of ideas. So, my favourite palettes from Juvia's are Tribe in first place, Magic Mini in second, and Masquerade Mini in third. And bizarrely, Masquerade is actually the first one that I ever bought. Oh, I did get done. I got it from a reseller site and uh, it turned out to be a dud. So, uh, but I liked the colour theme so much that I bought the genuine article. Right. This is, as ever, a training tutorial channel. So, I am going to be going in depth with my explanations. Possibly not as in depth as I normally do because obviously this is a collab and it's more about the collab than a tutorial um, but my chronic pain means I cannot blend as quickly as I used to um, and if you find that I'm going too slowly for you please feel free to use the speed widget and speed me up I will not be offended because sweetie pie if you don't tell me I'm not gonna lie right mm. faces are washed and moisturized SPF and primed so let's get you zoomed in As you can see, I come in really tight so you can absolutely see what I'm doing. Now, I've got deep set eyes, which are also sometimes called double lidded eyes. Now, I get a lot of the similar problems that people with hooded lids get, in that I get transference of shimmer onto the upper lid. Uh, if I'm cutting my crease, I have to cut up onto the upper lid rather than just on the socket. I have an eye booger that I hadn't realised. How lovely. Um, and when I'm using glitters, even with a glitter glue, I get a bare patch through here. I'll explain why in just a minute, but a lot of people with um, deep set eyes think they have hooded lids, or they're told they have hooded lids. I'm going to explain the differences to you, because the way that you deal with hooded lids and deep set eyes are different. So if you've struggled to follow tutorials before, hopefully this will help you. Now. When I relax my brows and look straight forward, you can see all of my mobile lid from inner to outer corner. You can't see much of it, but you can see it. So I haven't got hooded eyes. It's only if your upper or your static eyelid completely mm. covers your mobile lid, part or all of it, that you have a full or half hooded lid or what's known as a mono or an Asian eye. But it literally has to come down right to your lashes so you can't see your mobile lid. If, however, you're like me and you can see a bit of the mobile lid, but you still get the same issues that hooded lids suffer, it could be you've got deep set eyes. Let me show you why. If I cover my mobile lid this side and close my eye, you can see I've got as much lid space again from the crease that tucks back in. And then if I cover the static lid and close my eye, you can see again I've got lid space there as well. So that's why you get similar issues. Now the way that we deal with this is very different. If you have hooded lids, you get a brush like this, or a pencil brush, and you mark out on your static lid where you want your crease to fall. If you have deep set eyes like myself, you just follow the tutorial as normal but you keep sitting back every so often, relaxing your brows, and just making sure that you've brought your crease colour up high enough to see it when your eyes are open. Right, enough blethering, let's put some colour on the face. Well, my eyes anyway. Right, so I'm going to start off in Tribe, and my three favourite colours in here are Maasai, Tutsi, and San, which thankfully are all mattes. Not that I mind doing a shimmer through the crease as many of you will have seen me do over the years. So, I am going to grab... Oh, I've got such a choice because I washed all my brushes. Yay! Actually, shall I try the Jeffrey brushes? Yeah, I might give the Jeffrey brushes a go today because I've not used them yet. Um, and I wanted to use them with 
palettes that I know how they perform so I can adequately tell whether or not they are performing well. So, I'm going to start off with one of the synthetic brushes. This is the JS8. If you've moved your crease up for hooded lids so you've got less space between the crease and brow, start off with a slightly smaller blending brush than I am. So I'm going to go into Maasai first. Yep, seem to be picking the colour up okay. The base that I'm using on my eyes, I'm all over the place today folks, is Crow and Pebble in cotton. It's by far my favourite base because it's non-sticky, doesn't crease on me and you can blend on it straight away which is great. So I'm going to start off close to my brow but I like to leave sort of 3, 4, 5 mil between the top of the colour and my brow. I'm just going to, when I'm going towards the nose I circle in that direction, when I'm coming away from the nose I reverse the direction and come back again. What this does is it gently moves the eyelid around so that you cover everything and if you've got I mean, I've got super deep creasing here that it doesn't work on, but it will stop you from getting the sort of tiger striping or barcoding effect where your lid has moved and you've got a, a blank patch because it's a dead giveaway. I mean, I've lost 13 stone in the last few years and I'm 45, it's my eyelids move, but I know 20 year olds who genetically have got quite flexible eyelids anyway. Um, so this brush is going on, it's putting the colour on okay, no issues there, but then it's a synthetic brush so it shouldn't be a problem. But, I mean obviously I'm using this fresh out of the packet, I've not washed them yet. It does feel a little bit scratchy, especially compared to um, my Royal and Langnickel ones that I use. And actually, these actually feel scratchier than the AliExpress brushes that I recommend. Whether they'll feel different after I've washed them I don't know. I'm just waiting on a new soap to arrive because I used the last of my previous soap to do the big brush clean up last weekend. Um, I actually use my um, one of the companies that I'm affiliated with uh, my glitter OMG they do an awesome brush cleaner the absolute best brush cleaner I've ever found. Um, using that, I, I don't. I, I always condition my natural hair brushes, but um, that brush cleaner will actually get even natural hair brushes really soft without needing to condition them. It has, I think, it must have conditioning agents in it. Right, so I'm sitting back and just checking that the shapes match because obviously your eyes are not symmetrical. Unless you're James Charles and you Photoshop them that way. Okay, and I'm going to go in with Tootsie on the same brush. And bring that a little bit further down the eye. Now, if you've watched any of my films before, you will have probably seen me collab with Anya and Nona before, both individually and in our Bitches of Eastwick group. We bonded together over a certain larger YouTuber that everyone seems to think is so lovely. It was a complete and utter cow to all of us. So we bonded in our she was a nasty person. And we became the bitches of Eastwick. I do struggle here and here on both eyes where I get pigment like this, just sort of like grabbing and not wanting to blend. I kind of have to go in with my finger. It's just because I've got really dry patches there on my eyes. Sometimes it's worse than others. Sometimes I can get away and don't have to do that. But if you do that, you know, you can find that just using the heat of your finger can actually disperse it quite nicely. 
so yes so Anya and Nona you will have heard me talk about before Anya is such a kind caring woman she she will collab with you if you've got seven subscribers she will collab with you if you've got seven million subscribers um, well in fact all, for all of us are like that we um, we don't look at how many subscribers you've got we look at um, what sort of films you produce whether we feel that our personalities are similar whether we like the looks you do I mean you don't have to do massively bright looks like I do because when I first started collabing with Nona she was the neutral queen um, she's actually started getting more into colour since she's been collabing with myself and Anya and that's awesome to see but Anya is she's the auntie I would say of YouTube she is so supportive of everybody I don't think I've ever seen her make a even neutral comment she always puts very supportive encouraging comments you always find something encouraging to say about a look that you've done okay so I have to admit my eyelid is actually starting to feel a little bit sore using this brush I do struggle with fibro with very very sensitive skin so I'm hoping that this will as I said, once I get my new brush cleaner through from OMG, I'll um, give it a clean, see if that makes it any softer. Because I've used Morphe brushes before, and they've not felt this this scratchy. Um, it has stained a bit, but then I'm not surprised most brushes do. Right, which one do I want to go in with next? I need a more tapered one. Let's try... Let's try one of his natural hair br brushes. Because I did buy five and six from last time. With this style handle. And these are the new handles. Um, and I wasn't overly impressed with them. Now this is the this is JS9, which is a nice. It comes up to a really nice point. So I'm hoping that will really get into my crease there. And I'm going to go in with San. Now being a natural bristle brush, it will obviously re uh, work and react differently. But it seems to be grabbing the pigment quite well. Let's see how well it's going to lay the pigment down. It's a perfect shape for getting into the crease though. So if you've got deep set eyes like myself, this is a, a really good shape. I mean you can see, look, that's actually come up high enough that you can see it already. So I'm just going to blend along like so. I might cut my crease today actually. In which case I probably need to bring this up a little bit higher. So let's bring that up just a fraction higher. I haven't cut my crease in a film for quite a while so this is definitely softer than the previous iteration of his natural hair brushes but natural hair brushes are never going to be as soft as synthetic brushes because they are obviously a natural um, component and for people saying oh how can it be cruelty free this is goat hair. I don't know if you've ever been around goats, but they shed their hair like nobody's business. So I can believe that this is still cruelty free. But obviously if you're a vegan, I know you don't like using anything that's 
animal derived so you may have an issue with using natural brushes and I completely understand that that's entirely down to you but I wanted to try all of these brushes out I wanted to see if the five and six were any better than last time round obviously this is the nine but it's you know it's the same goat hair as the five and six You can see I've sort of flicked that out that side, so I just need to make sure I get the same kind of shape this side. Okay. That's what I was saying about sitting back and just making sure that it matches both sides. I'm not worried if it gets scrappy on the edge here because um, I haven't done my base yet and what I'll do is I'll end up just with micellar water coming up the edge there anyway just to neaten that up a little bit. So yes, Anya is, um, she's, she's the auntie of YouTube, she's such a sweetheart, I mean I, I just, she's always so supportive of everybody and so encouraging. And she does some pretty bomb looks as well. She doesn't tend to do blended looks, she does more editorial ones. This is what I was meaning about the tiger striping. Now because I've got such deep creasing this side, because my eye was pulled around when I was five years old at the ophthalmic when they were trying to work out why I wasn't seeing from it properly. Seems gone blind in that eye, so... I do have to stretch the lid out just to deal with that because the circular movement doesn't sort it out unfortunately. Do not stretch your lid out unless you absolutely have to or you will end up with horrific deep creases like what I have got and you will not like them. So Nona. Nona I discovered, I think I might have discovered her actually when she commented on one of my films and I started watching her channel and just I love the woman, she's just amazing she, um, as I said, she was the very much neutrals when I first started to watch her but she's, her um, her confidence levels have just soared since she's been subscribing with other people that do more colourful looks um, and she's now obviously a lot more comfortable doing them, which is absolutely great to see. Right. Just clean that off on the uh, microfiber cloth that I have there. Now, is there one suitable here for cutting the crease? No, not for the type I like. Right. So I'm going to grab. Regular viewers, if you've seen me cut my crease before, you will know exactly what I'm going for. Because I bought some brushes from eBay that are designed for nail acrylic and applying of nail acrylic. Just completely knocked something down there now. Good lord. Why is it I can never find the brush that I want when I'm looking for it? Sod's blinking law, I guess. Mm, I'm going with this one, I think. Right. The reason I like these brushes that are designed for nail acrylic is they come down super thin. As you can see, which is great for precision work. Now, I'm going to grab my ColourPop white concealer to cut the lid with today. And what I do, 
I grab some concealer on the brush and just close this back up again. I'm just going to grab a little mirror so I can see what I'm doing. And I'll whack this really roughly across the middle of my socket and then open my eyes and blink. And that smudges it up to show you where you need to cut your lid to. And that will work regardless of your eye shape. So if you've struggled with cutting your lid before, give that technique a try and just see if it helps. And then I'm just going to fill that in. So obviously it has picked up some of the green. That doesn't worry me. If you were worried by that kind of thing, you can just um, put my cellar water on like a cotton bud or a q tip and just do it that way and clear any colour off of your lid before you put the, the concealer on. But I'm not using particularly light colours and I know that Juvia's have got enough opacity in their shades to cover up that tint of green. So do the same thing this side, whack it on the socket, open your eye and blink a few times, relaxing your brows of course, and it shows you where to cut your lid to. See how fine that line is. That's what I like about these brushes. It gives you that accuracy. I mean, I picked up a set of, I think, six of these from eBay. Super cheap from China. I think they cost me about six quid-ish for six brushes. They are perfect for this kind of thing. Right now, what I'm going to do, I'm clearing all of the concealer off of the bristles, and then I'm going to very gently just push it and tap it over. the area where I've cut the crease and the reason I do that is because look how much it's pulled off of the, like, the eye that would be going and mixing in with the next colour you're going to put on your lid so I always advise doing this either with the back of the brush or if you've got shorter nails than me, you could probably tap your finger over it. But I don't really want to, you know, have my eye out. It just pulls up any excess product that you may have lurking. very Egyptian. I can zoom back out slightly where I've done it. So I go off. There we go. Then you can see both sides of it at the same time. I always keep these little plastic sheaths for these brushes 
just so that when they're in the pot with my other brushes it just protects them and stops them from splaying out everywhere. Right, let's go back into the Jeffrey brushes. And let's start off with this one. Right, so I'm going to start off with brush JS10, which is a nice packer brush. And I'm going to go into the Magic palette, and I'm going to go in with, I think, Osun first and then Faso. Now Osun is pretty much the same colour as these bristles so trying to judge whether I've actually got enough on the brush not that easy. Never go into a pressed pigment with a wet brush. Uh, I'm going to use this today this fixing spray for my heart revolution to wet the brush. I'm just going to I tend to twist this round in my fingers like this to dry the ferrule off so you don't get any moisture going down loosening the glue there. And I'm going to start off by popping this into the inner third of my lid. Super pretty. Okay, and dry it off and clean it off on the uh, microfiber cloth. And load the brush back up again. I don't know why I'm showing you that, you really can't see it on the uh, source. <laughs> now this side, because I've got the deep creasing, I have to pull it out, otherwise it sort of packs loosely into the crease. So I'm just going to mark where I need the pink to go to. Because if I don't do this, it ends up filling in those deep creases with loose pigment and then throughout the day as I sort of move my eye or blink it ends up cascading down my face which whilst it gives me very pretty looking freckles isn't really the effect I'm going for today. Again clean the brush off and I'm going to go into a faso. This one you can see on the bristles. Again, just dry the ferrule off. And then I'm going to pop this. Onto the middle section of my eye, and you can see that there's enough pigmentation in these Juvia's shimmers to cover the fact that the white concealer went a little bit green. I'm just going to wipe some of the loose pigment off the end of that brush. I really should use this magic palette more. It's so pretty. Problem is, I've 
I've been struggling a lot the last couple of months with chronic pain. So I've been trying desperately to get all of my collabs done because obviously that's a commitment that I've made with somebody else to do a film with and I've just I'm really getting behind on filming with the new palettes that I've got. And then by the time I film with them, they're not really new anymore. But you know, come see, come sa. I will get there eventually. Got a couple of new palettes that arrived today actually from Revolution. One of which I don't know if you've seen that new Lime Crime palette that's been advertised on trend mode, I think it was today. The sort of smoky grey one. Well, Revolution or Revolution is it Makeup Obsession? That's Makeup Obsession. I've got one called Black is the New Black. And that is actually pretty much a dupe for that Lime Crime one. But for once, Revolution got there first. Or Makeup Obsession. Makeup Obsession is part of the Revolution family, so... Okay, so that's two from my second favourite palette. And then down to my third placed palette. Which is, as you can see, probably my most used of the three. Because obviously I've had it the longest. And I'm going to go in with, I think, Makeda. Let's clean this brush off. And because we're coming up to the larger part of the eye, I'm going to try this JS11 brush, which is a bit wider. So Makeda is this one here. get the feeling this is really going to stain this brush. <laughs> so let's wet the pigment, dry the ferrule and apply to the eye. I'm just going to dry that off on there a minute. Pick up a wee bit more of the pigment. I didn't re wet the brush this time because the pigment that you'd laid down first is already damp, so the dry pigment will stick to it easily. This is so much fun. Oh, I haven't told you about Stacey's makeup corner, have I? I'm so busy wittering about Anya and Nona and then the palettes. So, Stacey, as I said, I discovered her through watching a collab that she did with Auntie Anya. And I thought then, she is going to go far, this girl. She's got a lovely personality. And she produces some pretty fab looks. I'm surprised that she hasn't got significantly more subscribers than she has at the moment, to be honest. But all three ladies will be linked in my description box to make it nice and easy for you to go over, find their channels, subscribe, all that goodness. Right, 
I am going to go off camera. Uh, I shall sharpen this up with a bit of micellar water. Oh yeah, as I thought, stain the brushes. I'll just show you what I'm going to do. This is the micellar water. <laughs> it's not dirty. I'm currently trying a charcoal micellar water from Lacura. Give it a go, see what it's like. Literally, all I do is that to neaten up the edge, and then I do exactly the same thing this side to neaten up the edge. Just in case you just wanted to see how I do that. Right, I'm going to pause you now and I'm going to bung some foundation on, do my face products, etc. And I'll be back to finish this eye look off with you. Don't go anywhere now. Hey, I am back. I decided because I've done such a colourful eye look, I would go for normal shaded brows today rather than my usual colourful brows. Um, I'm trying out this new Revolution Pro Define and Fill Brow Pencil Precision Microblade Effect for Fuller Brows. But it's a bit confusing because the top says dark brown and the front says dark brown but the back says ash brown. Who knows? Right, going in with this. Not oh, take my eyebrows make a funny little shape there. Oh, I quite like that expression. Ooh. Hmm. Sorry, having a moment. Right, so I'm going in with this brush and I'm going to go into San, which is the darker green that I used, and I'm going to run this along underneath my lower lash line like so, pulling it up ever so slightly along the edge of that purple there just to give a subtle winged effect and to follow the shape that I've cut on my lid. This one for some reason has gone a really bizarre shape on the side but do you know what? Today they are cousins not twins to be honest, they might even be kissing cousins. But, there we go. I'm happy with it. I like it. To the point I was going to film another one after this, but I like this look so much, I'm not going to film another film. I'm going to leave this makeup look on so that my hubby can see it when he comes in from work. And then I'm going in with, this is the brush from the Tarte Graveyard Girl palette, Swamp Queen. I love it because it's flat topped but it's really chunky. I suppose I really should be using a Jeffrey brush but I always use these two for under my eyes. So, and I'm going to go into Tootsie from my favourite palette, the Tribe. I'm just going to use that to really soften that lower lash line a bit. Like so. Yay, I managed to not poke myself in my eye, which makes a change. Normally I have to edit a bit out here where I poke myself in the eye, because obviously blind in this side, I haven't got any peripheral vision, I'm just relying on a viewfinder quite a long way off to be quite fair, and uh, muscle memory, and sometimes they let me down. Right, this is a lip brush that I bought from eBay years ago, 
And for, as we're doing Juvia's, I have got a Juvia's highlight that my lovely friend Kay sent me. This is the Tribe highlight of, oh, Tribe, volume 3, looks like that. So my favourite palette is the Tribe, and I'm going to use one of the Tribe highlighters. That couldn't have worked out better if I tried. And I'm going to pop that just under the tail of my brow there. Sort of feathering it off out towards the edge here. And I don't mean the dude from U2 either. And in a corner. And regular viewers know I like to take it under the tear duct as well. And just merge it with whatever colour I've put underneath my eye. You don't have to do that, you can just leave it to inner corner if you prefer that, but I think you can see with my shape eye it actually looks nicer when you do that. Now normally I pause you at this point to go and do mascara and everything, but I've got a new mascara I'm trying out today. I say new, it's not really new, it's new to me. It's this L'Oreal Paris, what are they calling it? Very different, unlimited mascara. It's got this thing around the, the neck that you have to take off. Because it's the one that does that. So I thought we'd give it a go. And I'll see what it's like. Nice Christmas tree shaped wand. This is just bizarre. You watch me ruin my makeup look now. Hmm. To be honest, I think I prefer it normal. Although it did make it a little bit easier doing my left eye. But oh, I'll just poke myself in the bloody eye then. It doesn't seem to be doing much in terms of making my lashes look pretty. Hmm. I don't know how I feel about that yet. It's still actually quite watery formula. So um, I might let it dry out a bit and try it again because it is very, very, very watery, which I'm not a fan of because then you end up with it everywhere. I prefer a much drier formula. I mean, look how much came off on there. And that will be coming off on your face. Okay. Right, I am now going to pause you. I'm going to chuck highlighter over the rest of my face, do my lippy, do something with my hair. Haven't decided what yet. And I will be back with my final look. See you right now. It's return of the hat. Oh, return of the hat. Yeah, return of the hat. Basically, it's too damn hot to put my hair down and it was looking a state, even up in a ponytail. So, it's the hat time. Kaylee, if you're watching this, have you bought yourself a hat yet, girly? Hmm? 
<laughs> you are going to get run out of your state, you know that, right? <laughs> right, this is my final look using my three favourite Juvia's palettes. What do you think? You like? You don't like? What are your three favourite Juvia's palettes? Have you not tried any Juvia's? Uh, and if you have chosen uh, your three favourite Juvia's palettes, which shades would you have used to create your look? I know my hat is tilted back a bit, but if I do that, you can't really see the eye look properly. I'm kind of trying to... That's better. Not quite so peeing a drum. Actually, these earrings look so good with this hat. Ooh. Thank you for suggesting the Nally. Or suggesting the stone, anyway. So. If you have got favourite palettes from Juvia's, let me know in the comments box which your favourite palettes are and what your favourite shades are from the palette. You don't have to do three two and one just just let me know your favorite shade from the Juvia's palettes that you've got I'd love to know that would be really interesting and you never know if I find one of your choices interesting enough I might even recreate it in an eye look for you so get your thinking caps on and uh, let me know now of course, this is not just about Juvia's and I, this is about Anya, Nona, and Stacey! Hopefully editing me has put those bubbles in where they need to be. Now, it's really, really important when we're doing collabs like this, please, that you do go and watch everybody's film. Even if, well, especially if it's a channel that you've not heard of before because there's so much drama goes on with the bigger beauty channels the smaller channels are what the beauty community used to be when it first started on YouTube it's supportive of one another it's not bitchy, it's not backstabby, we don't social climb we collab with people because we like the person, not because it's going to get us some more subscribers. Um, it's really important, especially to me. When I've collabed with someone, it's because I like that person. Not just the looks they produce, but I like their personality, you know, their outlook on life, their ethos, the way that they portray themselves on camera. That particular person I like. Otherwise, I wouldn't be collabing with them. And I have made probably some of my best friends, some of my closest friends, on YouTube. And I'm tearing up. And although this is a waterproof mascara, I haven't taken the photos yet. For someone who lives with chronic pain, and all the issues that come with that as in last minute cancellations of going to see friends because pain's just too high and you physically can't get out the door let alone be safe to drive um, and the whole isolation that you can feel when you're stuck indoors with chronic pain because you can't just I mean, one of the things that I miss most is just going out for a walk, grabbing my keys, grabbing a bottle of water and just going for a walk. I used to walk 10, 15 miles just for the fun of it, for an afternoon. You know, stop at a couple of pubs on the way, have a, have a lemonade or two, and sometimes something alcoholic, but usually if it was hot, I'd just go straight in and have a soda and lime, or a lemonade or a cola. Um, and I miss that. And it can be very isolating when you have chronic pain and you are disabled like myself. Um, Anya has chronic pain, I know Nona suffers as well. Um, 
Anne that I collab with has issues. So making friendships via YouTube and via the beauty, the smaller beauty community, has been fantastic for me. It really has been perfect. It's, been, it's exactly what I've needed. So it's really important to me that if you've enjoyed this film, and hopefully you are, if you've got this far through the film, I'm hoping you've enjoyed it. It's really important for me, please, that you do go and check out the other girls' films. Um, and just, you know, show them the same kind of love and support in their comments section that you always show me in mine. I always say my 4F family is probably one of the nicest support groups on YouTube, full stop. So. Pull yourself together, woman. Oh, like a pair of curtains. If you have discovered me through one of the other channels, hi, hello, welcome. I'm not always as emotional as I am today. Um, sometimes I'm better, sometimes I'm worse. Sometimes I waffle more, other times less so. Uh, but I hope you have enjoyed this and you might consider hitting that subscribe button. If you're not sure, I've got a lot of different films that you can go and check out to decide whether or not you have got an inkling that you would like to watch a few more films of mine. If not, that's not a problem. Not everybody's going to like me. I don't like everybody, so, you know. But I, I, I sincerely hope if you've got this far through the film that you've kind of enjoyed what you've seen. Right. All that remains for me to say, as ever, is you'll stay fabulous. And I'll see you next time. Bye for now. Mm -hmm.